Okay, so thank you so much for joining us. We'll probably have a few more log in over the next couple of minutes, uh, but we'll get into it. Uh, it's late in the night um, in uh, the UK where I'm based, and it's even later in the Scandinavian countries and then um, of Sweden and then of course Finland. Um, so. Um, I hope it's daylight. Oh, there we are. Yeah, so Mia's pointing to the darkness outside. I hope it is daylight wherever you are uh, as you dial into this webinar. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we had one earlier today, uh, and then this is the second one, and it's been uh, kind of very overwhelming, and we're very honored um, with the huge response that we've had, uh, both around the topic, but also about this fantastic uh, learning resource that we're launching today. So I'm going to get into it and um, people can kind of keep joining as we go. Alrighty. So first of all, my name is Natal Dank and I'm the co-founder of the Agile HR community, which you'll hear a bit more about this evening um, or today, wherever you are. Uh, my passion is helping organizations, teams and leaders, and particularly my fellow HR professionals uh, to transform how they work by embracing Agile mindset. I'm joined tonight with um, two fantastic people, uh, Mia Comedin and Rena Hellstrom, and I'll get them to say a couple of words, um, hello, to get us going. Mia, would you like to say hello to everyone? Hi, everyone. Uh, so glad to, to join in and to talk to you guys about this uh, subject, which also is a passion of mine, Agile, of course. HR, I'm quite new to, so I'm really happy to do this. Uh, I have a background from uh, design, design thinking, and innovation, lean startup, those kind of things, and product development. And uh, I think it's fantastic to, to do these kind of things in a network kind of way. Great. Thank you so much. And uh, you'll be seeing the uh, talent of Mia a little bit later when we get to the Agile HR in a nutshell uh, and why Rena and I um, and will never draw again. All right. And over to Rena. Could you say a couple of words, Rena, to introduce yourself? Thank you, Natal. Welcome, everyone. On my behalf, my name is Rena Hellström. I sit in Finland and it's currently uh, 11 o'clock in the evening. So uh, it, is, it is my honor to be here today with these beautiful, wonderful ladies, talented as well. Um, I work as an agile enterprise coach, helping large organizations transform into more agile. My background is in HR, but I'm more used to working with the business side today. And uh, my specialty is around uh, the executives and the HR people, the support functions, getting the management systems up and running. Fantastic. Okay, and so the way, um, so this is, a, well, first of all, a picture of the three of us uh, in Sweden recently when we got together to actually start the Agile HR in a nutshell, and, um, uh, and it's been a fantastic collaboration since then. So we'll aim to get to your questions um, in the last 15 minutes and answer as many as we can. So the first poll that we're doing tonight, which is to get a bit of an idea of who's on our line, and that's uh, to understand whether you actually work in human resources yourself um, or if you don't. So let's have a look at what's happened with this poll so far. Okay, so we currently have 67% of the people online uh, are in HR roles, so a little bit over half. Um, it was quite interesting. Earlier today, we had uh, 100 online and we had up to 70%, so quite a large proportion of HR people um, online today, which is great. The next question uh, that we're about to activate now on the Slido is understanding how much experience do you have working with Agile? So jump onto Slido when you've got some time and we can uh, get, uh, get some more information on that. You can also ask any question you want on Slido and then we'll get to it at the end. So one of the key reasons we're here is looking at Agile as the new working paradigm that's starting to really take over uh, all industries, all uh, businesses across the globe. And wherever I go, I'm meeting people and teams that are somehow trying to redesign how they work in response to changes that are happening in their market, whether it be disruption, complexity, the need to innovate, the need to get more competitive advantage. Uh, so 
agile is increasingly seen as the way to find some answers to these challenges that people are facing. And we really are shifting out of this more kind of uh, traditional industrial uh, paradigm into this more agile uh, digital ways of working. So tonight I'm going to ask uh, Maria, uh, Mia a few questions on why she feels that teams and organisations want to go agile. Mia, what's your thoughts on this? Well, we, of course, see a lot of organisations that want to become more agile or maybe already are in parts. And, uh, uh, of course, the reasons could be different, but responding to changing in the market and delivering value to the customer is becoming more difficult in traditional organizations and uh, I think organizations overall see that across the globe independent on what type of organization you are um, so I think that's that's mostly it to to release the brain power in the organization to solve more complex problems and to collaborate and uh, to create smaller teams that are quicker and also can make more and better decisions and, and move down that uh, mandate into the teams instead of having it on the top so that's that's my view. Excellent, great, and um, uh, e exactly that. And what this means is quite big implications for traditional ways that we've done HR and how we've actually tried to build organisations in the past. Uh, Steve Denning, who's a really interesting writer on this topic, talks about some new rules of the game, and they're the rule of the customer, the rule of small teams, and the rule of the network. Um, so, Rena, can I ask you uh, the next question, which is, given this new working paradigm of Agile, what do you see as the implications for the profession of HR and also the future of work? Yes, so a lot of the people we meet, you and me, Natal, we, we've heard the story over and over again. It's like HR knows that the things they are doing right now, the way that it's working, the services they are creating and offering are not up to speed to this world currently. So the business is changing with a rapid speed. There are changes uh, altogether in both the environment and legislation and everything. So it seems like we can't really keep up with the digital del uh, delivery with, with what the business really needs and are a bit caught in the legislative, administrative compliance part. Uh, so, so it seems like HR also needs a way and methods to deliver business to the va uh, value to the business. We need we need more uh, transparency across organizations. We are requiring speed and complex. We we are in complex environments ourselves, and we require speed from from HR services as well. So we are seeing a big shift going on, and some of the people we meet are saying we know that we need to change, but we don't quite know how. And Agile is a great answer to, answer to this because Agile helps you lead and navigate your development in a complex, complex environment stepwise. And I think that this is going to be a huge shift for HR. Yeah, definitely. The end of the Big Bang change. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and this is definitely why I myself have just really kind of embraced Agile and never looked back with my HR because by taking the customer in the heart of what you do, you put your people at the heart of what you do and everything is about co-creating directly with your people to build a great place of work. And it really is so much of what we've been looking for in the HR profession um, for quite a while now. So let's just quickly dive into a bit about Agile HR itself. Um, we're going to go into this a lot more when we get to the uh, Agile HR in the nutshell infographic, but just to kind of position it for people on the call who's not, who's not familiar with this. So when we look at Agile HR, we always kind of put it into two areas. And the first is Agile for HR. And this is about HR teams and HR professionals embracing an Agile mindset themselves and applying tools and techniques to how they work. So this could be uh, reusing a scrum board, um, doing stand-ups with your team. It generally means working in a much more cross-functional way within HR itself. And often it means running projects directly with the business um, to co-create solutions. Um, and so there's a lot of things here from design thinking uh, through to actual Kanban and scrum techniques that you can start to use to really boost 
your results. Um, though it is about finding your own flavor in all of this, there's no blueprint, um, but it is a really exciting space about how you can revolutionize how you work. So that's Agile for HR, applying it ourselves. The other side is HR for Agile. And this is a really important area. This is because of our role in HR, which is about building great places to work, we now need to look at how do we redesign so many of our services and our um, processes and our systems to enable agile ways of working. And this could be from being a part of the transformation team and looking at the organizational design of how you put agile across the organization and scale through to perhaps redesigning performance and reward to be a much more collective network team based um, environment. So these are the two areas and basically the big message here is they go hand in hand. So by embracing agile mindset and the techniques, you're going to have a much better uh, way of creating the right HR for agile. Ultimately, it, um, it, it means that we do need to look at uh, skills, behaviors of how we actually work in this new way. There's also a big thing about often HR can be our own blockers to uh, working in this new way. So we come from a very Tayloristic background. So the way that we set up uh, a lot of our tools and processes was more this top-down way, this hierarchical way of doing organizational structure. Agile means we actually need to unpick a lot of that stuff because a lot of it actually caused blockages um, and kind of impediments to working in an agile way. But of course, you can't do that in a big bang change. It's about co-creating these new ways with your people because it's very contextual. It's about finding out what works for your organization and your teams, where you're at on the agile journey. So you might be you know, fully agile um, or you might have just started and then actually starting to um, flex the way you're working around that. All right, so I'm going to hand over to Mia now, um, who's going to talk us through uh, what she's been doing with Agile in a nutshell and um, the amazing community that, that has developed um, across the globe as a, as a result. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Agile in a nutshell is, has become a series. It started with only one poster. It was the Agile in a nutshell poster. Uh, and now we have just today released the Agile HR in a nutshell poster. Uh, so all of these are part of this series. Uh, so you can download them for free. Uh, you can use them as you like in your trainings or in your workshops, in your coaching. Um, so uh, maybe you can take the next slide. Let me know if it's, yes, it's coming there. So this is the Agile in a nutshell where it all started. Uh, we have, or I have, uh, collected the, the different uh, concepts which I found would be valuable for people new to Agile to understand what Agile is, why you work Agile, how it's working, and uh, how it is to, to be Agile. So this was actually something that I created uh, for a group of people that I was coaching for four hours, and we covered these kind of topics. And I wanted to give them something to remember the training and something they could actually look at during the training. And uh, after that, I just posted it on the, on the blog and it was downloaded so many times. So I felt maybe this is a good thing. Maybe we should continue. So right now we have 10 different languages on all these different posters. And uh, you can see there, maybe you see your language uh, or maybe it's missing. And then you can let me know. You can translate either any one of these that you like, maybe the last one that we have here. Uh, so I started to receive images of people using this. It's really, really nice to get in, in contact with people around the globe. I've also, I've um, went to Turkey to present on the conference with Ilias, which is on the picture to the right. Uh, he translated it, it to Turkish. And uh, so these people are all people from the community helping to translate, and that's just amazing. And right now, I counted yesterday, we have around 70,000 downloads from all these posters around the globe in all the different languages. So I think it's, it's amazing to be able to contribute, to share the knowledge. And, and the picture is always so much more worth than words. So I hope you can use them and enjoy them. And you can download it on the, on the blog. Thank you. Fantastic. Thanks, Yumiya. And we've actually had a few people on chat uh, saying, uh, they're awesome. I use them uh, already and um, me too. I've translated the PO1 into Spanish. So um, uh, you've big fans around the world <laughs> as we found out in the last uh, webinar as well. Thank okay. you, everyone. <laughs> 
Great. So the next slide, uh, hopefully you see it, um, uh, is uh, going back to the poll. So the second question we asked everyone was how much experience do you have working with Agile? Well, similar again, we've got um, currently a quarter of people is um, Agile is brand new to them. And I think in the last one we had 50% was brand new. So it shows a lot of people in HR, this is still quite a new topic uh, for us. And then it kind of really varies between one to two years, three to five or five years plus. Um, so uh, it, it, but very much it's evidence that it's growing as a key topic for HR and why there's been so much interest in this webinar. Great. Okay, so we're going to activate the third poll now and you can go in there when you've got time when we're doing the, the next piece. Um, so I'll get my lovely assistant to activate the third poll. And the third poll is how much experience do you have uh, in agile organizational transformation? Uh, and this is the hot sort of the new space for HR. Okay, moving on. So of course, we are now at the Agile HR in a nutshell infographic. And uh, it is very exciting to release this. We've already had such a great response from the earlier webinar. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna talk you through the different elements on the infographic. And by doing so, we hope that's a really great way of getting into the topic itself. You'll see that the whole infographic is um, essentially playing on those two areas, which is Agile for HR, which is using the mindset, the tools and techniques in our own work. And then the other side, which is HR for Agile, which is all about reinventing really, or redesigning our services uh, and our systems and processes for Agile teams and organizations. Up the top, uh, we've got no more hippo decisions and I'll let you find out what that means uh, if you don't know. And of course, we are guided by uh, the Agile HR Manifesto, which is the HR's kind of version of the Agile Manifesto, which is quite nice words to live by. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask Mia or Rina to go into different parts of the infographic uh, and explain the different elements um, to that. If you do have questions, pop them on the Slido and we'll aim to get that to it afterwards. Okay, so I'm gonna start on the Agile for HR side. And of course, we're gonna start with mindset um, because this is so important um, to everything we do. So Mia, could you say a few words? Why is embracing mindset so important? Yes, of course. Uh, this uh, illustration here is something that I also brought with me from the Agile in a nutshell, the first one. Uh, so these kind of illustrations may be common in the different posters. And this one is really, really good because you can talk about how you get started maybe working with the Kanban or Scrum board and you have your team, you visualize and you see that the team is working with all the, the sticky notes and you can visualize and see everything that's going on. And then you might think that this is a really agile organization. You have stand-ups, you don't sit down having a meetings anymore this is so agile but as you move up in the onion that's where you get the real value from actually doing and working agile so once you start to add and use the principles and the values and maybe you you can actually change the structures to become agile to enable agility uh, that then you get much more value from actually working agile and Moving to the top and you, where you have the mindset where you can actually change your way of thinking and your way of working and, and allow new things to happen all the time in your organizations and always make great decisions based on the agile values. That's when you become a learning organization, which is the end kind of nirvana goal for agile organizations. This is where you can actually always find new ways of working. This is where the Spotify model is. That's they have the agile mindset. So this is a visualization of that. Fantastic. And um, lots of similarities to the concept of a learning organization that is very strong in the HR profession. Um, but also everyone I've ever worked with, particularly HR teams, uh, they all say, oh yeah, it's the mindset. You know, you can start using tools and techniques, but it's not until your mindset really shifts that you really start to um, work differently and not just um, changing a few things with some post-its. Yeah, and make decisions based on the actual mindset changes exactly. a lot of things, not just yeah. following what's written in the book or whatever. Definitely. Yeah, cool. And that takes us very nicely over to ways of working. Um, so I'm going to ask Rena to say a few words about what is these agile ways of working for HR? Yes, so it is lovely to see that uh, it also HR teams around the globe are now 
adopting agile ways of working and methodologies and frameworks. Some are starting to use Scrum, which is the most used framework around the world for agile ways of agile uh, a framework that you can use for getting value delivered. Uh, what we see is that we create cross-functional teams that actually can create end-to-end -end value in whatever we are doing. So think about HR. We are also developing products. We got services. We got policies, practices, processes. We are responsible of systemic changes such as performance management, reviews, um, training and development, talent, especially th these kind of things. So once we start developing them, we could create cross-functional teams responsible of an end-to-end -end delivery who can start delivering on that. And we will want to bring in people who is needed for that. So it might be that we use cross-functional teams from communications, marketing, from the business, of course, managers, employees on that team as well. And when we, was, when we will start working, we will start working in a way where we are prioritizing things that we need to get done. As you see, there's an illustration of a, of a scrum, scrum or Kanban board and moving things incrementally into done using hopefully very good Scrum or Agile frameworks uh, in our work. So you can see a list of different um, methods that you can use in HR work as well. Daily stand-ups, a review with your clients. Are we moving in the right direction? Getting feedback from them. We also use retrospectives. So in each and every cycle, we are learning uh, what can we would do better next cycle. Um, what is really uh, getting traction with HR leaders is the portfolio thinking. So we all always have too much on our table. We always have too many projects going on with too little resources. So how to really prioritize according to value and effort, that's something that you learn to do really well in Agile. This has been very useful for HR leaders. And working agreement is also important. So the team is working as a self-directed team with the mandate to deliver. So they create their working agreement together and stick to that and change something if, if it's needed to be changed to be delivering better. So this is what I would basically say that starting to work in agile teams is super fun. And what is the most fun is to see things happening very quickly. So getting results, small increments done feels good. Definitely. Yeah. And I, and it, it is a revolution for HR because we're always feeling like we're never getting anything done um, because we have the ultimate wish list and Agile really can help you hone in to work on what is the most valuable thing right here and right now for your people. So that takes us quite nicely over to the next bit, which is using this, this word co-create. So I'm going to ask Rena again, why is this word co-create um, linked to employee experience so important? What's happening here? So let me first be a bit, bit critical on our profession. We are often very good at having a goal, going to our bunker and designing by our little selves with HR people what we want to create and deliver and doing it all, everything in a nice package, all the details are thought out and then we implement everything in a big bang. So, and very soon we're noticing that, oh, we didn't think about this or this or this, or they didn't take it as we thought about that, as we expected them to take it. So co-creation is, is key in Agile. When we create these cross-functional teams and start working in iterations and creating increments of value, we will include people who are users, people who are our clients, people who we need feedback from, sponsors, stakeholders, to see if we're going in the right direction and even get them on board co-creating with us. So they are together with us creating the services that they will consume, which is a beautiful way of continuously getting validation that we are doing something of value and we're using our right resources and investments in a good way. Fantastic. And it's definitely this co-creation that for me, once I had embraced Agile, I just couldn't look back. And for so long in working in HR, there was always this angst about change management. How do you get people to buy in and change with you? Where if you do it in an Agile way, you're inviting them in and they're part of the change. Um, and, you're, and so this concept of co-creation is really quite a powerful um, level to go to uh, in your Agile HR. Okay, so 
linked to that is this concept of when you're co-creating, you're testing, well, what works and what doesn't directly with your people. And this leads us to be much more evidence-based. And being evidence-based, thinking like a scientist, is gaining a lot of traction in the HR profession to essentially put the credibility back uh, into the decisions that we make and link into things like people analytics and um, the use of data in the workplace. So again, I'm going to call on Rena to say a couple of words about being evidence-based in HR. Right, so I'm going to start from a scenario again. So who of us have, haven't been sitting in a leadership team where you bring in a lot of experience from the people space and that experience is weighing exactly as much as anybody else's opinion. So working with people's stuff and organizational design and management systems on opinions isn't always that fruitful. Where we need to start being better at is data evidence, looking into trying things out, experimenting and validating. So we, we talk a lot about the lean startup. If you want to read something about that, read about lean startup, where you learn how to stepwise validate your hypothesis and get data or try even two different things parallel. See if you try this recruitment process and this other recruitment process and see which gives you better data and works better. So this is what we're looking at when we're starting to use agile methodologies and mindset. We are not guessing anymore. We are getting data on how we're performing. Very important throughout the process of development and leads to better results and better KPIs as well. Great. Excellent. And um, what I also think is um, really important is in the little corner in that box is these three rings like the Olympic rings. And ultimately, they represent the idea that it's the virtuous cycle of what we're trying to create in HR. So by creating customer value, you deliver business value. And we're trying to say that by building that environment, you create employee value. So you have great people who want to work in a great place and deliver great value to their customer. This is a very different starting point to creating value in the name of shareholders and profit only. So this is the big kind of message around Agile HR. Okay, so then on the final part of Agile for HR is uh, the kind of what sits behind it with this idea of moving from a traditional waterfall to an Agile faith value-driven uh, change. Mia, could you talk to us through um, this part of the poster, please? Yes. So the, the two different ways of thinking and working here is the traditional waterfall way where you make all the, the big decisions in the beginning and you make the big plan and then you start to deliver on that. And in the end, you can actually see the full result and then you ship it to the customers or to the, the employees in the organization. And this is the change and you implement it. And then what happens then? You, you don't really know. Um, so this traditional way of thinking about change and, and doing it isn't really working anymore. And the new agile way of, of working and thinking about change is to do incremental small pieces, small changes and have learnings from feedback and see what happens. And the positive feedback that you get, that stuff that you can continue to do and, and the, the negative feedback that you didn't really know that you were going to get will impact your plan and change the plan and you take small steps and improve along the way. So that's why it's a value-driven change. So you're always looking for the value for the end customer or the actual employee in whatever processes or changing that you're doing. Uh, so this is all, of course, from, from software development, but you can also apply that within any area. So in HR, it's fantastic where you can actually co-create and then get feedback along the way and, and deliver small pieces and always get value. So there's also a big risk change um, difference uh, where you're in waterfall, you have the risk is increasing the longer the project is. And in waterfall or in, in agile, you have smaller pieces where you have smaller change and, and you almost eliminate the risk because you can always change the plan. So it's really, really good way of handling risk and big complex change projects that you have. So all the risk will eventually go away. 
Yeah, and I think this is um, one of the big messages for HR um, on, on a few levels. One is we often have very high risk projects. Um, it's about the people of the organization uh, and we're often don't know very much at the start or we've got a lot of assumptions. And the only way to validate, um, to move forward is to do those little incremental pieces of work um, so you get the evidence to then move, move forward and it therefore decrease your risk. The other thing is a lot of people ask, say to me, well, how do you do Agile in HR? Um, we're all about compliance and rules and regulation and surely Agile is too risky. And this is actually showing that it's actually a very disciplined, planned process uh, of how you manage risk. And we'll actually talk about that soon, um, but it actually fits very nicely into our uh, environment because it's being very upfront in which the parameters that you're working. Okay, so that is Agile for HR. Can um, I add one thing? Yeah, sure. Great. I just wanted to add that on a, on a higher level, if you talk executive level, um, very many people say, but I need my annual plan and I need my long-term plan because I put the, you know, I, I closed the budget and that's what we're going to do. But then I kind of changed that question back to them. How long will your annual plan actually be valid? When is it going to be needing to, when are you going to be needing to change that plan? And that is your planning cycle that you should have because reality hits and reality is where you live. So if you create those nice plans that gives you false sense of, sense of certainty, you're going to have those PowerPoints, but their the reality will change. So why not start thinking about that in an agile way and have a cycle time of planning, which actually fits the reality. And that's a really nice point because it actually takes us quite nicely into the next section, which is if we are to build agile organizations, then what does this mean for HR? What's our role? Um, and uh, how do we actually need to redesign our HR services? Because if you think about quite traditional ways of doing HR, we love the annual cycle. We couldn't get enough of it. Um, so it's all about how do we start to shift much towards to, to a business cycle, but that's going to be different for every organization um, in an agile world. So uh, as we just talked, that was Agile for HR, all the tools and the mindset that we can actually take into the HR role. And now we're going over to HR for Agile. And so this is all about the role that we play in organizational design, developing our people, building our talent, developing our leaders, and also enabling people to, to work effectively with uh, tools and processes like performance and reward and all these um, you know, hot topics that sit in the HR area. So once we start working agile, a lot of these things um, start to get questioned and start to get reinvented. Um, so we're going to touch on this uh, now. So we're going to go up to the top of HR for Agile, and it says organizational design for Agile. So, Reen, I'll get you to talk a bit about what's the key things that we need to consider here when we think about the, the organizational design for Agile. Thank you. So, first of all, imagine that you have built the whole HR system, the kind of architecture of all your services, portfolio, your processes and policies on top of the traditional hierarchic industrial operative model. Now, Agile is going to change that operative model into something which is more networked, more team-based, more uh, customer-focused, where the mandate of the decision-making is as close to the customer as possible. So you've got basically models coming from the industrial world, and they are not fitting together with the Agile operative model. So you need to start understanding what that operative model is and start redesigning what HR processes and services you have. So the organizational design for Agile on the left side um, are kind of bringing in a couple of things that you need to remember when you start looking into the due diligence of your HR portfolio. First of all, teams. It is very team-based work. We are moving away from a line manager organization where everyone has their little box where they are working in. We are moving into a team-based delivery where there are end-to-end -end teams that are brought work um, long-term teams, hopefully, that can really uh, escalate their velocity and, and deliver faster results. We also have a customer centricity in the center. So moving decisions as close, to, so close to the customer as you can. So you don't have to escalate small decisions up the hierarchy into a black hole where you never get any answers from. Uh, the other thing is 
clear leadership vision. So we need leadership on board. If we're going to move into agile operative models, we are going to need to make some systemic changes, uh, which I mean processes, practices, policies, etc. That's where we need executive mandate and executive involvement. So it can't, can't just be um, sponsorship, but executives need to be truly involved in understanding this and leading this. We have new roles coming in. We've got agile coaches, product owners, scrum masters who are really there to help the teams succeed. So we need to start working with them, start supporting them and start creating networks and help to support their success. And also the leadership thinking is going to really shift into helping autonomous teams work uh, to, to servant leadership, to uh, trying to get impediments removed. So whenever there, is, there are problems for the teams, the managers and leaders are there to get rid of those problems, to be able to get those teams to deliver and help them work. So that's basically the left side of, of that part. Great. And... All of those things you're talking about uh, is then uh, quite interesting when we want to scale. Uh, so uh, it's relatively straightforward to get this happening at a team level. Uh, and that's ultimately where Agile begins. But I know a lot of people on this call are looking at, well, what does this mean when you want to go across several teams or perhaps the whole organization? And this is where we start to hear uh, words like safe, less Spotify. So Rena, can you say a couple of words as to what, what, what is all of this about? All right. So you're not the first person who, who thought about this, that what am I going to do if I got two teams or three teams or 10 teams or two units that start working in an agile way? So there are people who have really been thinking about this and creating these operative models or framework models, example models that you can start using. They are called different with different names. So the most, most um, usual one is the hybrid model. So you've got the traditional line organization and you've got a part of it starting to work in an agile way. That's where we see these transformations starting to happen. Then we've got the biggest uh, scale model, which is SAFE, which is implemented across the world currently quite a lot. Uh, we've got Spotify model, which is also um, brought into organizations. Then we've got this up and up and coming, less scrum at scale and holacracy and sociocracy. So these are model, different models that organizations use. And if you are in agile, in, sorry, in HR, you need to know these models because you might be, one day you might be working in an organization which is a hybrid. And when you change work, you might be going into a scrum at scale organization or a safe organization or a Spotify model. So you need to understand how the operative model changes to be able to then redesign the HR practices and processes to fit that operative model. But what we say, Natal, um, what is the most important thing is that you need to understand your business, your context, your customers, and your talent base so that you should evolve the model to your context. Because you can't take one model and implement that, you will fail. This is much now sold to the executives because it sounds so easy. Here's the model, here's an implementation roadmap, this is the cost. Okay, so that's all about the kind of organizational transformation piece. And then sitting underneath that is HR services for an agile um, organization and for agile teams. So we'll quickly get Rina to say a bit more about this. Um, this is essentially redesigning what we do um, for agile, is it not, um, Rina? Sure. Uh, too often, uh, HR starts designing their processes from the compliance perspective, from the regulations. So what we need to start is, is from the user. What are, are they there to do? So our employees are there to create value for the clients. What is their cycle? What, what, is, what is their everyday? What does it look like? How can we support them succeeding in what they're doing? And at the same time, be compliant. So bringing these both and in, into the game is important for us. There are a lot of agile coaches doing a brilliant job helping organizations go agile. They don't have the experience we do in HR about these regulations or constraints. Now, when we start learning about Agile, we can actually start embedding agility, customer experience, employee experience in what we do, plus be compliant. There's also a lot of stuff that HR is doing that is totally unnecessary. If you start looking at what we are designing, are we designing for the one manager who is the one who never gets it? 
or are we designing for 90% um, of the people, 95% of the people who will do a good job, trusting them to do, do well? So this is also kind of a balance because many times HR are very risk averse and we want to design for that so that nobody can make a mistake. And that usually is not a good process, not a good service. So we're going to move forward and kind of wrap this up. So the next one down is this uh, strange word called Kinefin. Uh, what does this mean? And this is an, a fantastic framework to really help you understand why is Agile the new working paradigm. And basically it's showing that ag the more complex, uh, the bigger the problem, the better Agile is suited to that situation. And in particular, what it's saying is our working environment is increasingly full of big, complex problems. And this is why Agile is being embraced. But it's also a nice framework to help you understand where might you start to use Agile first in your HR teams and, and where might some of the other things sit, um, particularly when you begin. The framework's by um, Dave Snowden, uh, loads on the internet around that, um, and also um, we'll send you some resources following the webinar. So to finish up um, HR for Agile, I'm gonna ask Mia so to say a few words about the modern Agile framework um, and why she added this to the infographic. Yes, I did. <laughs> I love this one. This is the, the Agile Principles, and, and it's a framework by Joshua Korevsky. Uh, it, it tells us uh, the basic uh, that we need to understand to become Agile. Uh, deliver value continuously. So always think about how can we deliver in small pieces something that actually creates value for the end user. And that we need to make safety prerequisite in agile organizations to enable people to actually collaborate and speak their mind and also contribute in a good way. So how can we do that? That's super important. And if we do that, we can have experimentation and learn rapidly. So these two things together enable innovation. So if we can have that also in the organization, we can become an agile organization in a great way. And making people awesome, that's the end goal. And, and that's everyone in the, the ecosystem that we have. So it's the, um, the, the people that we have in the organization. It's the people who are employed. Uh, what do you call it? Now I lost the word. <laughs> um, yeah, Natalia's trying to say something. In employees, yep, yep. Yeah, yep, for you. Yep. Thank you very much. <laughs> and the end customer, of course, using our services. And, and uh, people uh, who are partners and delivering together with us. Everyone should feel awesome. That's the end goal. Uh, so I think this is a really good framework to help, help us think about the things that are really important. Yeah, it's a really nice crossover with what we are always trying to achieve in HR as well, which I think is, is really great. Excellent. So that is the infographic uh, in a nutshell, and um, it's now free for download. And uh, we'll show you where after this, uh, but hopefully it's going to be a great resource for you to explain, not to just yourself, but also particularly your stakeholders across the organization, what is Agile HR and what are you trying to achieve um, when you embrace this ways of working? Um, so just to uh, finish up before we move to the questions, which we're going to do next, is um, at the Agile HR community, we look at, well, what is the capabilities? What's the skills, behavior, and the knowledge that you need if you are to start working in this way and if you are to lead Agile transformation um, for your organization? And so we've put together 10 capabilities which ultimately links into a lot of what you've just seen. You can see even some very similar words there, co-creating employee experience, being evidence-based. And um, our whole program, two-day program and certification um, that follows is based around these 10 capabilities. So if you wanna learn more, jump onto the website uh, and have a look. Okay, so that's, uh, we're gonna move over to our questions and I'm gonna look at just um, the results to our final poll, which was how much experience do you have in agile organizational transformation? Okay, so we have 50% um, new to me, 8% uh, one to two years, 25% three to five years, and then five years plus was 17%. So again, half of the people on the call, it is new to you. Um, and But I imagine more and more you're hearing statements across the organization like, we're going agile, and you're thinking, oh my God, what does this mean for us? So um, good to see. Okay, we will now go into questions and um, 
just as I'm getting some questions together, the really interesting one came through on the chat, which was, you know, who owns this? Who are the people that are going to work in an agile way in HR? And this is the really interesting space is that, yes, you want the head of HR to be your, you know, your executive uh, leader and really endorsing this ways and changing the way they work as well. But it really moves beyond just one person owning this. And um, so the best sort of examples I've seen is when the leadership team of HR, and so that's the head of business partners, the head of L&D, the head of operations, the head of talent, et cetera, starting their own sprint themselves about how do they actually transform HR that, um, using these techniques. And then it moves from there. So it's actually more than kind of one person owning it. And this is what transforms HR is that We've been a history of one person owning huge, massive topics, one person owning talent, one person owning leadership. I know I did over the years. Um, and what Agile says is that we can't get anywhere if it's just this one person owning it. Um, and so it's about these multifunctional teams really solving problems together. Um, okay, so next um, key question, let's have a look. All right, yep, yeah. so we've got, have you been able to generate much interest with HR executives within the US? It seems significantly lacking. Rena, would you like to comment on this? You've just been in Boston, what, what's your thoughts? I agree. I'm sorry, but I, I agree. I, I, I can't see uh, and hear a lot of agile HR in the US and we need all your help that we can to get on that market and start talking about this and you go ahead and talk about it and, and do whatever you can. There is plenty of room for every one of us and we need to start this up and running. There, I, I also think there's a cultural um, head start for the Scandinavian countries because we are pretty low in hierarchy from the beginning. So we are quite keen on, on adopting the agile way of working and it fits our, our culture very well. So, so the, the U.S. is a bit different in the working culture. And I also heard that in the U.S., a lot of agile transformations are pushed and implemented. So agile is implemented without using agile values, which is very strange for me. So this is something that we can work on quite a lot as well. So very happy to get all the help you can. We are actually having a date in San Francisco for May already. So if we can get signups for that, we can get the first program running in the States as well. We'd be happy to come over. Okay, we'll move on to another one. So we've got ones where there's been a, a bit more of a vote. So um, the first one's a good question. So what is the guidance for teams who operate in Agile um, needing to work with teams who do not. So ultimately this idea of you've got teams that are working agile and then some teams that are not. Uh, what's the kind of things we've got to think about here? And Mia, I'm, I'll, I'll start with you. What's your thoughts on this situation? Yes, okay. So a lot of times it starts small. It could be starting in one team. So like Natal was saying, it's not maybe the manager implementing stuff. Uh, it usually grows from bottom up. Uh, so it happens a lot that one team has started to work agile. But what happens when the contacts that you have outside of the team are not agile? Of course, they could have different rhythms. So it might take a very long time to get information or whatever you need from people outside. Um, so have patience and involve them, invite them. Uh, try to get them on board in your team to work and collaborate with you, invite them to workshops uh, so they understand what you do and how you do stuff so they also can see the value. Usually this is how it spreads. So this is how this kind of uh, agile um, organizational changes actually can spread by themselves. So that could mean that other organizations or parts of the organizations also start to work in teams or maybe they want to join your team. So have patience, involve them and train them as you work together. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, it also brings out, I think, um, another thing, key thing for HR, which is how do you help with the governance of the organization? And this is particularly important um, if you're going to be an organization that doesn't go fully agile. So it, it's quite common now for parts of an organization to be 
non-agile and other parts to be full agile. And so then you're looking at, well, how do you create a good governance um, network that goes across these? And as uh, Mia said, so much of it is about understanding each other's work. Uh, in particular, teams like finance, HR, and other kind of planning service oriented areas often aren't the ones that go agile, particularly at the start. But it's really important that they understand the cycles of what agile mean. And as we were saying earlier, things like budgeting and planning start to flex around how you do this across the business. Okay, um, I'm gonna go into and next one, Rena, I'm going to ask you this one. So what traditional HR systems or processes do we need to change for working effectively in Agile? Oh, mm -hmm. what not? <laughs> well, first of all, I tend to say, let's go through the, uh, the, the HR portfolio and see which of your processes and practices are impediments for Agile. Let's first get rid of the blockers and then we can start looking into redesigning something to really really support Agile. The blockers tend to be, the first blockers tend to be, first of all, performance management. If you add a one-year objective per individual in your organizations, how can they ever work in a team which is constantly reiterating what they are doing? Doesn't work. So performance management and target setting. The second one are the line managers and the management because they don't understand how Agile works they are going in and disturbing the agile work with additional requests or taking away resources because in agile we really truly want the resources or the people to work in the teams and and the people to be able to deliver value and focus on that so we got managers picking up people from teams and handing them other stuff to do that's not going to work so we need management to understand what this is all about those are a couple of the first things that i would say that are really important the other ones are take a due diligence on your policies are they preventing team-based work self-directiveness mandate to make decisions accountabilities and mandates are really important to see as well what is the budget that the team can spend what are the constraints for the decision making the team can do so those need to be clear Great. No, totally. And I think the, you know, again, the key message is embrace an agile way of working to do it. Um, there's some really interesting research that came out where lots of organizations jumped to removing ratings and changing their performance process because that they thought that would enable agile. Uh, and then I read that some organizations have put the ratings back in because uh, ultimately no one knew what to do. And so you've, this is why you've got to incrementally build change, even in things like performance, um, so your people feel really comfortable and part of it as you go. Okay, so we've got five minutes left, so I think we can do one more question and then um, we will uh, wrap up. So um, we've got one here, which is interesting. So my previous background was a scrum master for software development teams. Now being in HR, what are similarities or differences for using agile scrum in HR? The key thing that I've found is that um, particularly at the start, it is very hard unless it's a kind of uh, individual project for HR teams to do back to back sprints um, week in, week out usually because um, there is all this other business as usual. And also we come from this world where, uh, as I was saying earlier, you have all these specialty owners. So someone owns talent, someone owns leadership, someone owns learning and development. And when you bring these people together to work, it takes a while for that to shift and that to shift to a team type ownership. And also you have deep specialties in these areas. So you also don't want to fully lose that as well. So a lot of teams I've worked with often look at creating space for them to, to sprint on key problems or do some design thinking about key things. And then maybe for the rest of the month, keep things going using a Kanban technique for managing workload. Some teams that have now been working in this way for some time have been able to then move that to this sort of combination of Kanban and Scrum. And things come into the team uh, different people in the team own it rather than just the specialty owner. And they also use more of a sprint kind of method to kind of, you know, attack, tackle key problems or get something out of the door in a, a quick way. Then there's this other kind of sort of thing that's starting to happen in HR organizational structure with Agile is a kind of separation out of what we would call kind of the solutions design area 
um, and more the kind of operational business advisory area. Um, so Vistaprint is a really interesting example. And so what they've created is essentially the employee experience is their product and they've created agile uh, teams that create, um, build features for the product people experience. And these are scrum teams. They've got a scrum master, they've got an um, PO, they've got a delivery lead, um, and then specialists from HR in there. Then over in their ops area, um, they've combined that with business partners and actually agile coaches, and they run a shared backlog and they pull work um, from that uh, to actually go and deliver um, solutions and answers and advice across the business. So it's a really interesting model. Um, you can look that up. Um, Steve Denning has written an article on that as well in Forbes. Okay, so two minutes left. Um, so I think that's going to be it for questions um, tonight. Um, Rena, if you just say a couple of words about Agile HR community, just to finish us off, uh, over to you. Sure. So Natalia and I found each other on Twitter four years ago, and we hit it off and realized that we share the same passion for changing how our profession works. We were working in this space already for four years before that, trying to get Agile HR off the ground, and here we are. So we, we really want to future-proof this, this space. We are thinking that the current bodies who are training HR, who are certifying HR, are not really there yet. So we need to, we need to redesign this whole space. And we've spent two years now working with this. We have trained over 700 people to date. We've been, been doing product development with our training and certification. That has been gaining a lot of traction. A lot, a lot of people walk, walk away from there saying, now they know what to do and how to do it. We run some meetups and we got some trainings around the globe. So take a look at our training calendar. If you can't find your, your city there, please let us know that you're interested. And if there's enough interest in the area, we can just put together a date and come over. We're also interested in finding somebody who can host the training so we can have a training in your premises. And yeah, follow this space. And by the way, because of GDPR, we can't start sending you a lot of information and materials. So opt in for our newsletters opt in for information from us so you can follow this space from Agile HR community. Thank you. Great, excellent. And then Mia, would you be able to say a couple of words to finish off uh, about Dandy People? Yes, thank you. So Dandy People is an Agile coaching company in Stockholm in Sweden, and uh, we work hands-on helping our clients to transform and, and to become Agile across the organization. It doesn't matter which part where we start or if the organization is actually already working agile, but want to improve. So it could be different types of, of changes that we work with to enable business agility and agile product development. Uh, so here you can see, you can click the blog and that's where you can download this poster and the other posters as well. Excellent. Alrighty. And so uh, off you go. You can go and download the Agile HR in a nutshell uh, infographic. Um, use it wisely. Um, use it well. And uh, it's been fantastic having you all online. Thank you so much for the engagement on chat and your questions. I know we didn't cover all of them, um, but hopefully we've uh, covered enough for you to feel like um, you can get it getting into the topic. Um, and we've got a few people coming on to say goodbye. Hello. Good to see you, Pablo. <laughs> Alrighty. Um, thank you so much and have a great day or evening uh, wherever you are in the world. <laughs> you are. Thank you very much. Bye. Yeah. Thanks a lot. And good night. Yes. Bye. <laughs> Bye.